Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. And Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On the 8th of December is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. It's the title of Our Lady which this Archdiocese has and it is also the title of the Cathedral at Perth. Our Lady was pre-redeemed. The Franciscans have a particular claim to seeing the title of Our Lady of the Immaculate Conception. Her first prerogative has been proclaimed a dogma of the faith. The Franciscans promulgated and defended, propagated and defended the teaching that the Blessed Mother, our Mother, was preserved from original sin. She wasn't liberated. We have been liberated through baptism from original sin. Our Lady was preserved uniquely, the only creature preserved from original sin. She received the benefits of the redemption before the event in time. St Francis because God could do it that way. He decided to do it that way and he did do it that way. Those were the words re-echoed by blessed John Duns from the words of St Ambrose. St Francis had a particular devotion, a great love for the blessed Virgin Mary as she was the advocate as she had asked our Lord for the order of the Franciscan minors to be formed. Jesus can never refuse his mother, obedient and honouring his mother at all times, she never ceases to be the mother of God. At the little chapel of Our Lady Queen of the Angels, in Assisi, Italy, that little portion called the Portuncula, Mary identified her presence, her Marian presence, which magnified St. Francis's understanding of rebuilding the church beyond his understanding, which was that of a church to be built and restructured with bricks and mortar. It wasn't the edifice of the building now which was awakening St Francis's understanding. <laughs> the church meaning was extending to the whole human race. The membership of the church was to include for humanity. And how was that to be done? The members which are those baptised through Our Lady. Now Mary is mother of, of us all, be it the saved or unsaved, but the building of the church is to be in the heart of every man, woman and child. And what and where was that first church? Our Lady, of course. The Virgin made church. Our Lady, because she was and is the immaculately conceived, the immaculate conception. At Lourdes, clearly the words came through when Bernadette had asked Our Lady at the request of her spiritual director, what is the name of this beautiful woman, Tota Pulchra? I am 
the Immaculate Conception, was Our Lady's response when we know those words, I am who am, coming from the burning bush, when Moses was in dialogue with God, I am who am, there is only one I am who am, that's God, the one universal God, three persons in the one God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I am the Immaculate Conception. There is no other Immaculate Conception. Our Lady is the Immaculate Conception. And again at Lourdes, when she identified this title, she bowed her head, realising the enormity of this great privilege which had been given to her. She wasn't any other woman, and this is the dogma which separates us from so many other Christian faiths. The importance of Our Lady is immeasurable. The importance of Our Lady in our sanctification is impossible, and our redemption without the consent of Our Lady would never have happened. We would still be in darkness. Our Lady was conceived without sin. She was preserved from sin and the inclination to sin. She gave birth to the head of the church and the mystical body of the church at Pentecost. The incarnation is the moment when she had conceived in her womb by way of the Holy Spirit the head of the church, Jesus, and then at Pentecost, after Jesus had ascended into heaven, nine days after, she, the mother of Jesus, prayed together with the apostles and the Holy Spirit came. And that in the church's magisterium, both ordinary and extraordinary, is the birth of the church. Francis rebuilding of the church was therefore and continues today to bring mankind into the heart of Mary, the Immaculate Heart, the heart that first conceived Jesus before Jesus was conceived in her womb, momentarily different. In the order of things, as per the word of God, Mary is the mother of the word of God. In Colossians 1.15, Christ was and is first in everything, hence the person of Jesus, the Eucharist, the Eucharistic Jesus is in the centre and sum of our faith. So is Christ, the beginning and the end, in the order of things, and that everything is subject to him. God does not change, nor does he change the order of things, for in him, in Christ, were created all things in heaven on earth, everything visible and invisible. Christ is first. Christ is first. But who gave us Christ? Mary, who consented to the invitation. The Immaculate Conception consented to the Holy Spirit conceived in her womb, Jesus, in the order of things, in the order of God's design, Jesus is the first and the last, the Alpha and Omega. God did not need, God did not need anything. God did not need sin to enter into the world this was never in the order of things. 
God did not need original sin to come to us, to dwell amongst us, his image and likeness. In that alone, we can see we are made in the image and likeness of Christ. Therefore, in the order of things, before time came into existence, Christ is the first of everything. Therefore, he was coming anyway. He didn't need sin to come to us. He was coming, even if there wasn't sin, to dwell amongst his image and likeness, and therefore to be a child of Mary. Christ's image was, when he came as an Adamite, as a child of Mary. And that generation of birthright came to us through the first Adam and Eve, who came as adults and the generation of the human race was through the sacrament of marriage, marriage between a man and a woman, is the society God mandated for bringing up children. Christ came before man. Man was made according to Christ. Christ comes before man in God's creative design. Christ came before man. We are not talking in time, but in the order of God's creative design. And God, again, was not subject to Satan. He got tempted when he was here on earth, but he didn't need sin to come to us. The image and likeness we have is the image and likeness of Christ. Our image and likeness came from Christ. Christ, in the order of things, was first. And this is the order of God's design. Jesus was to be a child of the Immaculate Conception, the one full of grace. Those were the words spoken by the Archangel Gabriel. Full of grace, the magisterium of the church interprets as there was no sin. The divine person, Jesus, had his divinity before his humanity. Of course, he was without sin. How could it be any other way? The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us by becoming a child of Mary. You are all beautiful. O Mary, and the original stain is not in you. You are the glory of Jerusalem. You are the joy of Israel. You are the honour of our people. You are the advocate of sinners. O Mary, O Mary, Virgin most prudent, Mother most merciful, Pray for us, intercede for us, to the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>